Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bal Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Number no. Six of 2020, renewing the appointment of Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa as the capital governor for four years. His Majesty the King also issued Decree Number no. Seven of 2020, appointing Rashid Salah Rashid Saad as Deputy CEO of the Supreme Council for the Environment, the SCE, with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law Number no. 4 of 2020, ratifying the documents of the Universal Postal Union approved in the 24th Conference held in 2008, the 25th Conference held in 2012, and the 26th Conference held in 2016. Article 1 stipulates that the documents are approved as follows. The documents of the Universal Postal Union approved at the 24th Conference held in 2008, the 8th Additional Protocol to the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union, the first additional protocol to the general regulations of the Universal Postal Union, the final protocol to the Universal Postal Convention and the Postal Payment Services Agreement. Second, the documents of the Universal Postal Union approved at the 25th Conference held in 2012, the general regulations of the Universal Postal Union as amended, the final protocol to the Universal Postal Convention and the Postal Payment Service Agreement. Third, the documents of the Universal Postal Union approved at the, to at the 26th Conference held in 2016, the ninth additional protocol for the constitution of the Universal Postal Union, the first additional protocol to the general regulations of the Universal Postal Union, the final protocol to the Universal Postal Convention and the Postal Payment Services Agreements and its final protocol. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Environment, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rajd Al Khalifa, the President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation Brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, crowned Joaquin Sterling from Al Ain Stables in the United Arab Emirates as the champion of His Majesty the King's Cup for GCC Stables at Bahrain International Endurance Village. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah also crowned the second and third place winners. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed satisfaction with the distinguished levels presented at the race, noting that it was exciting since its beginning. His Highness stated that the Gulf Stables always seek to participate in the race with their best horses in light of the strong competition witnessed in the race. He noted that rider Joaquin won first place with all merit after the year for exciting competition. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stated the great technical levels witnessed in the race and affirmed the distinguished status of the endurance sport in the Arab world. His Highness congratulated the riders who won first place in the Gulf Stables race. Regarding junior and young riders, His Highness stressed that the expectations indicate open competition between all the participating riders and stables, adding that they will bring out their technical capabilities in today's race, wishing them all success. His Highness has stated that the victorious team will participate with distinguished elements in the race, stressing that the team will go on according to the coach's plan to achieve the best results. The President of Brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, hailed the unlimited support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser for endurance races, noting that his follow-up to all stages of the race affirms his keenness to achieve successes for all the tournaments organized by the Federation. Sheikh Isa expressed pleasure with the success of His Majesty the King's Cup for GCC Stables and noted the Federation, the Board of Directors and its committees will strive for the success of the race.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, is Hani Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ahmed bin Tawfiq Al Mu'ayyid, who presented to him by a young delegation headed by the founder and CEO of a Brilliant Lab, Nadal Dehani, and Director of Sustainability and Innovation at Zain Kuwait, Hayal Manai. During the meeting, His Hani Sheikh Nasser listened to a detailed explanation from Nadal that they honey about the work done by the Kuwaiti youth delegation and the company Brilliant Lab aimed at providing advisory and technical services to support small and medium youth institutions and working with them to achieve development in various administrative and technical levels. The President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired a meeting of the Board of Directors of the Real Estate Regularity Authority, in which its recent activities were discussed. Sheikh Salman praised the work of the members of the board, which included the execution of various decisions as per Real Estate Regulation Law Number 27. He affirmed that these efforts are intended to attract further investments in the real estate market. Sheikh Salman directed the board to coordinate with the relevant parties in regulating the real estate market to ensure the health of the economy as well as that of the market. He also agreed to form a team to discuss the ways in which the real estate market can be further developed. Under the framework of the Strategic Community Partnership and Enhancing Communication with National Bodies, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met today with the scores of Bahrainis, including religious, media and business figures, as well as members of the youth and sports clubs. The Minister welcomed the audience and delivered the following speech. <laughs> وأننا اليوم نجتمع في ظل التوجيهات الملكية لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه للاهتمام بسلامة المواطنين والمقيمين والمحافظة على راحتهم وطمأنينتهم وكذلك ما توليه الحكومة الرشيدة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي رئيس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله ورعاه في تحقيق التوجيهات الملكية السامية لتوفير الحياة الكريمة للمواطنين والمقيمين وأيضا ما يقوم به صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله ورعاه من متابعة مخلصة ومستمرة لمختلف القضايا الوطنية والتي تتصدرها في هذه المرحلة طبعا الإجراءات الوطنية لمكافحة انتشار فيروس الكورونا وقد تمت دعوتكم يا حضرات الأفاضل لكونكم من أعيان البلاد ووجهائها وطاقتها الوطنية الفاعلة فإن كلماتكم ومتابعتكم وجهودكم تغطي ولا شك مساحة اجتماعية وإعلامية كبيرة في هذا الوطن ونحن اليوم في ظروف تستدعي تعزيز الشراكة المجتمعية وتعزيز الروح الوطنية والظرف والوقت لا يسمح بتبادل اللوم لأن المسألة أكثر جدية وأكبر من من أي تحديات أخرى اليوم في ظل هذا الحضور الوطني أريد أن أسجل كلمة شكر فقد كانت بيننا العديد من اللقاءات واللي كنت أسميها أنا ذاك لقاءات أمنية في السنوات الماضية ولا شك وقد لمست فيكم الموقف الوطني المشرف فقد كنتم نعم الأشقاء والسند 
وقد انعكس ذلك على عملنا في الميدان لقد كنا نعمل بتصميم القائد والوطن وارجو قبول خالص شكري وتقديري شكرا اليوم كما تعلمون فان الحكومه تعمل بكل طاقتها لمواجهه انتشار فيروس الكورونا وان دوركم الوطني اليوم هو متابعه تنفيذ الارشادات الصحيه في المجتمع كل كل حسب قدرته وكل حسب اختصاصه ومسؤولياته وان احنا ما في شك نعول على الروح الوطنيه التي تميز بها كافه ابناء البحرين بمختلف اطيافهم والتي تهدف الى سلامه المواطنين والمقيمين والزائرين مودي ان اعطي ملاحظه حول انتشار العدوى فلا يغيب عن بالنا بان عدم الاكتراث والجهل لا شك انه يساعد على انتشار الفيروسات ولكن المجتمعات المثقفه والمنضبطه مثل مجتمع البحرين سقل فيها المفروض خطوره انتشار هذه الفيروسات هو صغر المساحه الاجماليه لمملكه البحرين ولذلك فان الحلول اللي يتم وضعها هي حلول شامله وايضا اجراءات التعامل تكون اكثر صرامه اما بالنسبه للاجراءات الطبيه اللي تم اتخاذها انا ما راح ادخل فيها الامر فهناك كما تعلمون لجنه مسؤوله وهناك جهد طبي مشكور يقومون به ابنائكم وبناتكم واخوانكم للقيام بالاجراءات الطبيه اللازمه وانا اعلم ان هذول الجماعه يعملون على مدار الساعه ولهم جزيل الشكر ولهم جزيل الامتنان ايضا ودي ان اشير الى جهود بعض المواطنين والاخوه الافاضل اللي حاولوا ان يقومون بتوعيه الناس مشكورين الا ان الوعي العام لا يزال بحاجه والارشاد والناس ولا شك ما يريدون ان يغيروا اسلوب ونمط حياته لكن الوضع يفرض علينا تغيير بعض السلوكيات سواء كانت سلوكيات مجتمعية أو اجتماعات لأي ظروف أو مناسبات أخرى فالواقع يفرض علينا تقديم المصلحة العامة والصحة العامة على أي اعتبار آخر ما في شك أن فضاء الحياة هو أرحب من خطورة الوباء ولكن دورنا هو أن احنا نغلل من هذه الخطورة على المجتمع والأمر أرى أنه يتطلب تعاون الجميع وبدون استثناء حتى نستطيع أن نحافظ على سلامة بعضنا البعض هذه يعني خلاصة ما أريد أن أقول لكم اليوم في هذا الحضور لأني متأكد من دوركم في المجتمع وما يمكن أن تقومون به للمساعدة في مواجهة ما يهدد سلامة المواطنين وصحة
The minister then discussed a number of topics, including the mechanisms to handle the coronavirus crisis and the developed measures taken by the kingdom in this regard, as well as preventive measures that should be taken to avoid the infection. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the religious figures for their efforts in ensuring the safety of people and raising their awareness regarding the issue. He stressed the importance of ensuring the credibility of information and avoid the misuse of social media in spreading rumors. He pointed out that the criminal rate in the kingdom had decreased compared to 2008 and 2009 and praised the recent achievements of the kingdom and the various fields, especially the sports field. The audience expressed thanks and appreciation to the minister for his keenness to communicate with the people of Bahrain and work to enhance community partnerships as well as strengthening unity and facing all threats that target the safety of the kingdom. They praised the efforts and sacrifices of the security officers who worked to maintain the national gains and the safety of all. The Ministry of Health announced that it has registered seven new confirmed cases of the coronavirus COVID-19 in the Kingdom of Bahrain, increasing the total confirmed cases to 33. Infected individuals were immediately transferred to Ibrahim Khalil Khanu Community Medical Center for isolation and treatment following tests that confirmed they were carrying COVID-19 upon arrival at Bahrain International Airport via indirect flight from Iran. All individuals in contact with the infected patients have also been quarantined as per preventive efforts. The ministry also noted that one of the newly recorded cases is of a Bahraini citizen who had returned from Iran before the country announced the pandemic. The citizen, who called 444 having presented COVID-19 symptoms, was quickly transferred to isolation for treatment. The ministry will continue intensifying epidemiological monitoring at its entry points, particularly at Bahrain International Airport, as well as testing all existing suspected cases to ensure containment of the virus. The ministry urges all citizens and residents who have visited Iran during February to self-isolate immediately and call 444 to schedule a medical examination dates as they pose a risk to their families and communities. The Civil Aviation Affairs in the Kingdom of Bahrain announced the suspension of all flights to and from Iraq and Lebanon until further notice, effective immediately. It urges all citizens and residents of Bahrain who are currently in areas affected by the coronavirus, COVID-19, and who are planning to return to the Kingdom of Bahrain to call the following number, 17227555. It affirms that it is cooperating with all authorities to take the necessary measures in light of COVID-19. All arrivals to Bahrain International airport suspected of infection will be tested and if found to be suffering from the condition are immediately transferred to designated centers for isolation and treatment. The Civil Aviation Affairs has stressed the need to adhere to established health guidelines in order to combat COVID-19. The Ministry of Health affirmed that it continues to take precautionary measures to combat the spread of coronavirus. The Ministry called on all sections of Bahraini society to follow the instructions that they have provided to ensure their safety and to avoid spreading the virus. The Ministry affirmed that it has called up on all of its caterers in coordination with other parties in the Kingdom to combat the virus. The Ministry also affirmed the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands, hugs and kisses. It's also covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and advises to avoid public spaces when possible. The ministry called on citizens and residents to strengthen their immune system by exercising, eating well and drinking plenty of water while ensuring that all scheduled vaccines are taken as per the ministry's recommendations.
Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Why? Washing your hands with soap and water or using alcohol-based hand rub kills viruses that may be on your hands. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing and avoid crowded areas as much as possible. Why? When someone coughs or sneezes, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose or mouth, which may contain viruses. If you are too close, you can breathe in the droplets, including the COVID-19 virus, if the person coughing has the disease. Crowds are unpredictable zones. Avoid them for now. Why? Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose, or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and make you sick. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Why? Droplets spread viruses. By following good respiratory hygiene, you protect the people around you from viruses such as colds, flus, and COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention by calling 444 and follow the instructions given by the medical team. Why? The Ministry of Health has the most up-to-date information on the situation, which will protect you and help prevent the spread of viruses and other infections. King Fahad Causeway Authority has announced that the passengers' movement and finalization of travel procedures via King Fahad Causeway in both directions, the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, are taking place in a normal way. The announcement was made refuting rumors on the closure of the causeway. The Labour Fund Temkin has signed a partnership agreement with several leading banks in Bahrain with plans to launch the solar financing scheme as part of Temkin's Temwheel scheme to empower enterprises and enable them to purchase solar energy panels to generate energy, which in turn will help them reduce their costs. More on this report with Haba Abdel Ghaffar. Aiming to support enterprises in the private sector and enhance their productivity through relying on renewable and clean energy, the Labour Fund Temkin signs a partnership agreement with several leading banks in Bahrain, which in turn will help them reduce their costs and focus on growth, aligned with Bahrain's economic vision 2030. We want to provide incentives for the companies whether they are small, medium or large, to invest in renewable and energy efficiency. And today's agreement will help in that and it helps us to achieve the national targets for renewable energy, which is 5% by 2025 and increases to 10% by 2035 and energy efficiency 5-6% by 2035. This initiative will reduce First, uh, the bills, the electricity bills on those companies, which will encourage them to be part of this initiative. Second, we'll reduce, we'll reduce the emissions on the power plants because the demand on the power plants is supposed to be dropped. The scheme covers the costs of the solar energy panels and is compliant with the Islamic Sharia within a competitive rate since Temkin supports 70% of the annual profit rate. The amount of funding ranges between 5,000 Bahraini dinars and 500,000 Bahraini dinars with a repayment period of up to 10 years and a grace period that's subject to the terms of the bank. Everybody, individual or uh, you know, organization, has a responsibility to fulfill and make this happen. So here in, in the financial sector, we are always following these uh, uh, structures. And uh, uh, for example, 
the, the Vision 2030, we want to be part of it. And this is a good example that, you know, for the Islamic Bank to go for the sustainable development. We support sustainable energy and we believe this is the future. Well, this is our duties towards the kingdom. And being a Bahraini bank, we believe uh, in uh, partnership with Temkin and the sustainable energy. We believe that uh, this is, will have a great future and the partnership with all related parties, including Temkin, other banks, as well as the government, will help this project to be a successful and Bahrain will be leading in this area. This fruitful partnership encourages institutions and companies in the kingdom to adopt sustainable energy to achieve the UN's sustainable development goals by 2030 and contribute to the growth and development of Bahrain on a wider scale. Launching the solar financing scheme for enterprises comes as part of Temkin's strategic efforts, emphasizing the impact of its Temwil scheme and encouraging the transformation to renewable energy and decreasing energy expenditures. Heba Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, on the sidelines of the meetings of the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the keenness of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to respect human rights principles and abide by international agreements in accordance with the National Action Charter and the Constitution of Bahrain and its national legislation. Dr. Zayani expressed Bahrain pride in its membership in the Human Rights Council after it gained and won the confidence of the international community and obtained 165 votes according to an advanced work program, explaining the importance of the Human Rights Council and the membership of the Kingdom in it to consolidate and promote the principles of human rights and support the development and contribution to human rights work in a way that meets common goals. He praised the role of the High Commissioner to Human Rights in the process of protecting and promoting human rights in various countries of the world, stressing Bahrain's support to the work of the Commission and its continuation of cooperation and joint work in building capacity, exchange experiences and technical support in the field of human rights. For her part, Michel Bachelet congratulated the Minister of Foreign Affairs on his new position and noted the importance of cooperation with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights and Bahrain's endeavor to promote and protect human rights, wishing the Kingdom continued progress and prosperity. The meeting was attended by the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs, Abdullah bin Faisal al the Ambassador of the Permanent Mission of the Bahrain to the United Nations Office and other international organizations, Dr. Yusuf Abdul Karim Bucheri and the delegation accompanying the minister. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning announced that in cooperation with the General Directorate of uh, Traffic of the Ministry of Interior and Bahrain Airport Company will open a part of the new road leading to the Bahrain Airport from Khalif al-Kabir Highway, right turn to road 2403, which is in front of the existing terminal. The opening will take place on Friday, February the 28th. All road users are requested to observe and obey the traffic rules for safety of all.